All right, awesome. I'm live. Um, just so you guys know, if for some reason this uh, stream stops, I will be over on Facebook on uh, Eric Notowski Art on that page. So in the event that something happens, last time I did a, a stream with Gary Shipman, it got flagged and it ended shortly after we started. So just a heads up. And uh, so as soon as Mike comes over, I will get him in here. But I'm going to have Mike McMahon with me. He's the artist on USA Assassin coming out soon. And the link is in the description. You could go over to the Indiegogo page and check out his upcoming campaign. And uh, Mike is a cool dude. And he's got a very uh, similar style to my own. Very highly influenced by the 90s and stuff. So excited to talk to him. And as soon as he comes in, I will get him on the stream with me. But hope you guys are doing good. Happy Saturday to you. Um, I'll probably stream about an hour today with Mike. Thereabouts, we'll see how it goes. And there he is. Get him in here. What's up, Mike? Welcome. Hey, what's going on? Can you hear hey, me? Hey, how are you, man? Oh, I'm good. I can hear you. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. I, I did. I started the stream already. Just wanted to let people know in case it stops for some odd reason. Just go over to the Facebook page and they can, you know, we'll pick up over there or something. Gotcha. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah, man. So we're just going to, you know, chill and chat and um, take it easy, man. How you doing today? I'm doing good. Doing good. Had a, a week by myself in self-quarantine. Um, really? Yeah, uh, my older three kids went to their mom's house, and then my wife and our youngest uh, went up to her parents' house. And uh, I've just been deep cleaning the house and getting some work done. And gotcha. Enjoying cool, the silence. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. So you said they were up there for four days. Yeah, they've been up there. Well, they've been up there since uh, Monday afternoon. Gotcha. Yeah. But they'll be back tomorrow uh, morning. Nice. Cool, yeah. Man. Good deal. Ugh. Um, what are you gonna? What are you working on right now? Um. Uh, well, I have a a blank page. Mm -hmm. Nice. Page thirty nine. Uh, I was just kind of going through my script, making my little scratches, and then I don't really do elaborate. Uh thumbnails i usually just go straight to the page if, if i'm feeling it really? uh, otherwise like if it's like a specific pose or or uh layout i have to kind of mess around with it a little bit more but i don't go i don't go super in depth um i've just always been kind of you know like our guy uh, uh jim lee uh, i've always been kind of a straight to the page kind of about kind of guy cool man yeah, I, I I find it's hard for me to go straight to the page um, just because I'll like I lay out my panels and then I there's like something that I, I screw up the like the sizing of and then yeah. like I have to constantly redraw. So I, I do mine on eight and a half by eleven and I found that just you know, working smaller helps me out and then I blow it up and then I'm I'm like good to go. But I can't I don't know why I can't do straight to the page unless it's like a, a splash page, then it doesn't matter, you know? But yeah so i know with um like the first uh the first volume of of us assassin um i did that i did you know like eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper and and i would do i would rule out what the dimensions i can't remember what they are now but i would rule yeah. out what the dimensions were to blow them up and i would draw them block out the characters, put in a little bit of detail, and then I would scan that in, blow it up, blue line it, and then print it out and then draw. I did that for probably the first 20 pages of, of volume one. Mm. And uh, I kind of streamlined because at that time, what I was doing was I was I was doing that. I was penciling it. I was inking it. And then the first batch of pages, I was doing ink wash over it, And it was just taking too long. Mm. to uh to get through the work and you know volume one took me like almost three years to draw and volume two is 
is almost done. So <laughs> wow, uh, hasn't taken <laughs> nearly as long. Yeah. Um, and just so people know, um, I, I put the link in the description for USA Assassin so people can uh, sign up for it for the awesome. email list. Um, but yeah, do you want to go ahead and just tell people uh, about your book, what you're working on, and, and all that good stuff? Yeah, uh, U.S. Assassin is about a, uh, um, I don't know if I would, uh, he's, he's a military agent, uh, Joe Knight. Um, the the beginning of the story, he's on his last mission, uh, and he goes to, to kind of retire, and uh, one of the doctors who kind of patches him up uh, sets him up with uh, a, a business card to go see this group, um, Blackstorm, because uh, they're needing um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not like a trainer, but uh, a mm. consultant, a consultant uh, for this new team of, of uh, soldiers that that this uh, section of the the government is is put together. And he winds up finding out that they are metahumans. Um, they're not really uh, on the up and up, as he finds out. Uh, some of them are a little hair triggered. And uh, mm. when he threatens to kind of pull the plug on it, they go after his family. And uh, uh, like, like the, uh, the title of it is, it's called Old Habits. Um, old habits die hard and he has to become the US assassin one more time to, to save his family uh, and uh, basically the last half of the book is is just action just explosions and gunfire <laughs> and swords and all the cool stuff because Mark and I uh, Mark Poulton the writer uh, were huge fans of, of all the stuff from the 80s and the 90s this was kind of our love letter to uh, the old U.S. assassin, or not U.S. assassin, uh, American Ninja movies. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, at the time, um, at the time we were coming up with the idea, um, uh, like the Suicide Squad movie hit was coming out. Jim Lee was getting on Suicide Squad, the book, and I was like, "How about we make the bad guys like them, like?" They're metahumans. They're kind of soldiers in the sense that no one's going to miss them if they're gone kind of thing. <laughs> um, and then it kind of built into that they're just a bunch of really bad people uh, that felt like they could get away with doing whatever they wanted. Um, so then, like, volume two is, is man, for his, his nuts, his volume one is volume two is, like, cranked to 11. Um <laughs> Mark knew Mark and I, I, I believe right now Mark has it set out to, for four volumes, um, and this one is is just gonzo nuts, um, double play page spreads and um, yeah monsters and ninjas and and all sorts of of goofy stuff. His uh, uh Mark's son Chase uh created the character Slither, the big snake, uh, snake guy. And, uh, mm -hmm. that was, um, Mark was at home and, and Chase came up to him and, and handed him this drawing of this guy with like an orange shirt and snakes coming out of his face. And I was like, Oh man, we got it. We got to use that. We, we got to use that. And then I, I quickly drew like a bust shot, sent it to Mark and, and, you know, now Chase has a, a character in there. Uh, with Slither, um, cool. And then Mark was talking about uh, while we were still doing putting uh, Volume One together, I was still probably like ten pages in out of eighty. And uh, wow, so it's it's going to be a big book then. It's not oh, just yeah. a okay. yeah, it's a, it's a big book. The Volume One is a big book. Volume Two is only fifty pages, but uh, you get the same amount of bang for your buck. Okay. Um, and you're waiting for both books to be done before you even launch, or is it the first book? Uh, the first book. We're waiting for to get it back from uh, uh, from the printer because things got messed up. Because it was a the it was originally a with Graveyard Ship Volume Two campaign, 
Okay. But because uh, Mark and John had to switch printers because of the coronavirus and China shut down, and that's where Print Ninja is, gotcha. uh, where they, they get their stuff printed. They've had to switch gears and and find different printers that are still open and available, and uh, they had to wait for refunds from, from Print Ninja. So it's been kind of a little bit of a nightmare for them. Because hmm. um, originally we were going to, by the time people got their free copy, um, we were going to put up a, a second chance campaign for volume one for people that missed out. Um, and then by the time that would have fulfilled, we would have had volume two done and launched that probably in the fall, I think. Um, but yeah, we were supposed to, we were supposed to launch, I think in April and, uh, April or May. And it's who knows, who knows when, when we're going to be able to do it now, but hopefully right. sooner than later. Because yeah. volume one, it's completely done. It's it's colored by Andrew Dollhouse, who uh, has colored uh, Brett Booth stuff for DC, um, nice. Bloodshot for Valiant. I love Andrew's work. Andrew is uh, when they told because originally it was supposed to be Anthony George, the guy that colored um, Graveyard Shift, mm -hmm. but because he was coloring Graveyard Shift Volume Two, the supplemental books and some other stuff he was just overtaxed and yeah it's kind of funny because because anthony and i have, have been wanting to work together forever and we thought this was going to be our chance i mean technically we we are working together because he colored my supplemental story uh for graveyard shift volume two um but yeah getting andrew dollhouse was uh man that was so awesome and uh it was neat because I was like, you know, I know you're used to working over Brett, and and Brett's a beast of a, <laughs> you know, yeah. and he's like, no, 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 man. I he goes, I like what I've seen, and I, I can definitely tell that you know, you're on your artistic journey of you know, the more you draw, the the better you get, and he goes, I can tell by the begin, and, and that's kind of what my hope was was by the beginning to the end, you see like a huge growth because. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't drawn like uh, pages and mass in, in years, so mm. it was nice to nice to be able to do that. And you know, uh, I think what's helping me with volume two is the graveyard just supplemental had a deadline, so I had to learn. You know, you can't mess around. You can't. You know, how can I not cut corners? But how can I cut? unnecessary that out, of, right. out of my process um, sure. to make sure that I'm still giving as good as I can and uh, get it out on time. So um, that definitely helped. Uh, yeah. Deadlines are, I, I remember when I did um, Samson, the, uh, I forget the subtitle, but it was a Samson book and he wanted to have it done by um, San Diego Comic-Con. And I don't know how I did it, but I, I managed to get it done, you know, like, two months earlier than July. Uh, so that way he can get it and everything. And I still can't believe I did it, but just having the deadline in front of me was like, okay, I got to do this. And you know, you figure it out. <laughs> yeah. You make it yeah. up. So. <laughs> yeah. It definitely helps to have, have, have a, a deadline going on. Um, yeah. is, and if anybody has any questions, just chat them in the chat and uh, I'll ask Mike. Any questions you might have, but uh, yeah. there's a sneak yeah. peek at the uh, the new outfit for U.S. Assassin. Oh, nice! Minus the mask. Cool. Is that a star across this? Yeah, chest? yeah. Okay, it's, nice. it's it's my uh, my homage to uh, Guardian from Alpha Flight because I mm. I when I was a kid I picked up Alpha Flight because uh, unbeknownst to me i just was always attracted to john Byrne stuff i didn't really at the time know artists yet and uh i was like oh man guardian is like the coolest guy and then issue 12 they kill him off and i'm like no uh, <laughs> i just thought the design was so cool uh yeah that's rad looking yeah yeah i like it i and what's funny is um i had done some uh some turnarounds of different designs and mark you know, I sent him to Mark, and he was like, I, I like this on this one. I like this on this one. And then when it came time to do the reveal of the outfit page, I just did it 
on the on the fly on the spot i was like this is what i'm feeling this is what i think will look cool um so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna wing it and when i showed mark he was like wow i was like yes how <laughs> <laughs> great okay. cool. nice so you nailed yeah. it on the first try yeah <laughs> Yeah, and it, it really worked out too because I right now I just um I blue line on the on the board and then I ink right over it and so I'm kind of glad he liked it because it was done. <laughs> oh right right. So it was like yeah, yeah. Like, I'm finished. It's inked. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot of uh, it's really getting me out of my comfort zone of uh, doing it that way. It's kind of like just taking that that leap of faith that that step off the cliff. Yeah, you know, and hoping, you know, your faith and your abilities and yourself is enough to sustain you, you know, mm -hmm. from falling. So it's it's been a lot of fun, and and uh, man, the end of volume two, I can't wait for people to see it because uh, that page is uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun, and 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 it rolling into volume three. Um. Man, volume three is going to be just absolutely nuts, uh, cool. and I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Cool. Well, I hope you guys can get it, uh, get everything situated, and get it, you know, yeah. printed. And so, just so I understand you correctly, the the first volume hasn't really hit Indiegogo, or it was offered with Graveyard Shift, and people did purchase it. It was it was a perk if we got to one hundred and seventy thousand, I think. Uh, oh. it was a free, it was, it was a stretch goal. I see. And, uh, and man, I, I did not think we were going to make it cause I think we were, gosh, uh, like $20,000 away from it, I think, or if not more, but man, uh, John went on Ethan's stream and they were, on, I was there till cause John's real big on. Uh, not having a, a store open for it that once it's done, it's done. Right. You, yeah. you don't get, another, uh, you know, you don't get an extended shot at it. And uh, I remember staying up that night. I was on my couch watching it on my TV on YouTube and just like biting my nails because I was just <laughs> like, Oh God, we're not, we're not going to make it. We're not going to make it. We're not going to make it. And then I think it wound up being like 177,000, I think was the final tally. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Wow, that's just insane. So that's cool. Yeah, that uh, that package when people get it because it goes it goes to all the backers. Um, nice. So there's gonna be Graveyard Shift Volume Two. There's the 80 pages of U.S. Assassin Volume One, and then there's the the supplemental book uh, that people get. I thought there was a fourth. I don't know. The 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 Gemini mailers they said are going to be packed to capacity. <laughs> I bet. So uh, yeah, I just I can't wait to hold it in my hands. I mean that's that's the biggest thing. Like mm -hmm. I've done some some like indie st stuff for like Marat Michaels, and uh, uh, I love working for Marat because he's one of the guys I I loved following in the '90s because you got to see him get better with each issue. Yeah. Uh, of brigade, going from brigade to blind side to uh, all his other stuff, Demon Slayer, and and uh, he's just always been super cool too. Like I got a really neat. Um, my wife and my daughter went down to Texas a few years ago, and and he was at the convention there, and she got me a, a commission of Deathstroke that he did for me, which is just awesome. It's nice one of my uh my pride and joys and of course they facetime me and he's like hey buddy and i was like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> killing me uh but yeah he's it, it's he, he gives out a, a couple comps and and i know the first round of stuff that i did for him i got a little too like hand handy outy like mm -hmm. here 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 and then i realized oh man i don't have any more and <laughs> and it, it kind of Kind of, it kind of stinks because, like, to get a copy of that book, you have to go on eBay, and they're like twenty bucks a piece. And I'm just like, mm. yeah. But I have, I have now. I now have, I have one copy of everything I've, I've done, and I, I keep them all together to, to look at and laugh at, and. <laughs> 
Yeah, nice. I I I did like a little short three issue uh, miniseries called uh, Monomyth. Okay. And and somehow I have they did a trade of it thankfully, but somehow I I I lost I think issue two or three. I, I don't know. I was going through my issues and I like I had two of them, but not the third. I'm like, what the heck? Like, I remember putting it away specifically so I would have one copy, you know, and I lost it. I don't know what the heck happened to it. So, like, oh. man. But, um, who, who published that? It's called uh, Awesome Comics, O-S-S-M, not affiliated with the awesome comics that Rob Liefeld did. Gotcha. Um, Omar Spahi is the, the owner's name. So, um, okay. Track that down. Yeah. Um, I'll show you. So this is the logo. Uh, awesome oh, Comics. That's and cool. This is the trade. So... It was the three issue series. I actually I went um, straight to pencils and just um, I didn't do inks at all. It was just pencil, and then they oh wow uh, uh, just darkened it in Photoshop and then sent it off to the colorist. But it was it was a fun book. That's really book. tight too. Yeah, I, I I had to get tight because I was like, all right, this is it. So <laughs> I was like pushing hard on my pencil and just you know doing the best I could. But yeah, so it, it's um. It's kind of like a, a different take on the biblical story where Lucifer is actually a good angel. She's the, the woman here. And then mm -hmm. Michael, Michael is the one that revolts from heaven and leads the army against uh, Eden. And uh, this guy, this guy is Enoch. He's one of the, the main characters too. So it's a fun, fun little book. Yeah, that's neat. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was glad to hear you're uh, you're gonna have a in demand store for uh, Shadow Century. Yeah, for Shadow Century, because uh, I was like, I don't think I'm gonna make the deadline. Yeah, uh, I definitely want to get. There's a couple books I want to get, but it's just you know priorities right now, and for sure, uh, all this craziness going on in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I figured it'd help people too, you know, that they, they can't get it right now, but just leave it open. And, you know, there's been a lot of people who said, man, I want to get it, but, you know, I just can't right now. So, yeah, I totally understand. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing the mailing route yet. I'll leave it open. Yeah, and, and <laughs> yeah I, I can understand why he does it that way, but at the same time, kind of like, oh, man, kind of like having more than, you know, all right, here's here's my infamous running down the hallway scene from my first published works. <laughs> Is that one? Do, 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 do. Nice. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's me. Yeah, that's the original version. And what book was that from? Uh, the first one is the very first book I ever had published, which day glow yellow cover. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we decided to redo it. Um, let's see if I can get the camera up a little bit more, maybe. Nice. Maybe. And that's the the redo of it. Cool. Here's my my love of Sylvester. I did a kind of like a homage cover to uh, Cyber Force. 16, maybe six. I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. With Huntsman and uh, with your face ballistic. Yeah. I really loved uh, Sylvester. He's just, man, he's he's so good. <laughs> yeah. All, all the image guys had their had their strengths um, in different ways. Like, I mean, I'm just, I'm a huge nut for Todd McFarlane and, and, uh, uh, let's see. I don't know if you've ever seen. If you ever seen the? Oh wow, that's not going to show up. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, yeah, that's vault edition. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's really cool because it's like you get to see. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. Just yeah, I've never seen so that. neat. Huh? I've, I've never seen that. Yeah, it's the second one. 
And like it's it's so cool because like you can see like the blue. He does he drew stuff in blue pencil to to kind of because he was inking himself. Hmm. But he was inking with with Proquil all the time and and uh, sometimes for speed. Like it was something I, I'm really wanting to to get that look for. I'll do Proquil, but sometimes mm -hmm. more often than not, I have to I have to go for speed. So, uh, right. Uh, this is my main workhorse. Is the Micron PN? It's got that plastic tip on it. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I can I can build up lines and. Um, it doesn't like some sometimes microns like the tip is real solid but then sometimes you'll get like a split yeah especially with like the the little ones like the the 005 and stuff like that right but then this is that's the tombow brush pen nice and this is a pentel one you get a really nice i mean it's basically just a brush and uh, mm. you squeeze the the gray part to get ink to come down, and we've got a couple of these. Um, you can refill them, but you need almost like a like a needle to to get into the well. Gotcha. Yeah. Is that the Pentel that makes that one? I'll have to check that out. Yeah. And then I sometimes use Copics. I know. I kind of got lumped into that craze of everyone. Oh, Copics, 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 but mm -hmm. yeah, their their quality is not really that different from a Micron, and Microns are cheaper. So, right, yeah. And then That's the fill, in, fill in big black areas. Got the Faber Castell one nine nine, and then the Faber Castell just regular brush to. I don't do any fine work with this. I just use it to fill in like small spots. Mm. Uh, let's see what else I got. I think this is another. This is a zebra. Zebra brush. It's very similar to the, the Tombow. If you go to jetpens.com, you can get. Um, there's they have two different sets of of uh, Japanese uh, brush pens that you can get in. Mm -hmm. I did that. I think the what they have available now is different than what I got when I first okay. did it. But uh, yeah, it's really it's really nice. And cool. I got my my Croquil. I used to do uh, the zebra or the, um, the Maru tips, and uh, I just went back to the one hundred two. I gotcha. use uh, this was a uh, burnishing kit. Uh, like you just unscrew this, yeah, and then you pull it out. I, I was inspired by Mike. Um, that's really what got me back into to inking with a crow quill. Is watching him on his streams and just seeing how how clean, how how confident he is with his line work. Yeah, it's, just, it's the dude's super inspiring, and uh, you know. I, I hate that everybody is kind of at odds with each other. Right. Um, it, it just, it drives me nuts. But I mean, man, Mike to me is like of the original kind of skate guys. I, I love Ethan's work. I'm friends with John. I love his work, but I honestly feel like Mike was the, the most traditionally talented comic book artist of, of all of them. He just, hmm. his style, his speed, his storytelling um yeah his speed blows me away man especially with a crow quill i mean that's just nuts it's just yeah. nuts. I, I can't i can't keep up um this was the ink i was using until uh i ran out same pen that todd uses okay. um, but i just i i like the bottles so i just i get um because i work on uh eon high def boards because they're nice, mm -hmm. bright, and white, and they're they have a, a thickness to them similar to old image stock. Mm -hmm. um, and so I got the Vortex ink that Eon sells, and I just fill up these bottles with it. And nice. that's the way that's how I ink for the most part. 
the the croquel pen, do you actually put the ink in the pen, or is it? Well, you dip it. Okay. All right. Yeah. The well, thing on the <laughs> gotcha. And then I think I think that's a I think that's a Z. That's a blah, 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 blah. I think that's a Maru tip or or a G. Mm. I think that's the Maru. I think the G looks different. Tashikawa makes these uh, the steels a bit better because like sometimes you can get some some one o twos and they're like aluminum foil. Like you put any kind of pressure, and they just go. Yeah. But uh, the Japanese steel is a lot better for for quills. But I just I keep coming back to to the one o two, and you just you get a box and you hope for the best. I think you right. get like, I think you get like twelve in here. And, uh, you know, every once in a while you'll have a dud or one that wears out really quick. But, uh, man, for, for getting the, those lines, man, you just can't really beat it. Yeah, I not too long ago I, I kind of practiced again with it just to see if I could kind of get it to work where I would like it. But I, I felt like I used the 102, and I felt like the lines were so small. I was like, man, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna have to like build up my lines, yeah, little by little. And um, so yeah, I was just like, I don't know if I could do this, like just jump to it, you know, and try and use it on my pages. So yeah, because I mean, you can get these thin lines, and then you can, you know, and you can feather out from that. Hmm. But you That's can, you know, I think the thing that a lot of people uh, shy away from is because you have to keep dipping, keep dipping. Mm. Uh, I know when I was younger, um, it is nice to get like the, you have to do like a lot of straight lines in a row. Mm -hmm. For some reason, that turns out better for me than trying to use like a point zero whatever. Right, point zero five or whatever. Yeah, or point zero three, which is like working with <laughs> I, I'm, I'm pretty heavy handed sometimes and so it's hard for me to work with those little ones yeah that yeah, uh, looks good though yeah but I uh, yeah. my first or er, second the, the redo of the of uh, that first book I did there's a page in the backup story um, this one right here this was done so quickly and so crappily with like sharpies because I didn't know any better <laughs> back then. But I had been using crow quill on everything, and I was at a com my local comic shop. They always let me come in and and uh, chit chat and draw. They had a table set up in the back for me, and mm -hmm. uh, I went to go stand up, and my, I did not put the lid on my my jar of ink, and it dumped all over this mm -hmm. whole page that had just been done, oh, and man. I. Just, like my heart just broke. I was like, "Oh God, no!" <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I feel worse. for you, man. <laughs> yeah, nothing worse than than all that work going to nothing. That is the nice thing about pens, though. It's it's something disastrous would have to happen for you to uh, to lose a day's work. Right. Like I've never had a a, a pen explode on me. So. Mm hmm. There's always a first time, I guess. I think I just jinxed myself at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I was watching the auctions last night, and man, I couldn't believe that that Kevin wasn't getting any bids on stuff. I know. Usually he, he does great. Um, so I don't know, I don't know what, what's going on there, but uh, yeah. His we is some another book I want, I want to get really bad because uh, I've loved his stuff in the past. Mm, yeah, Drangar looks amazing. Looks really good. Like I'm excited, man. There's there's so many good titles coming out or that have, that have been out, and it's just it's awesome. Yeah, it's and it's it's really neat. Is like you know a few years ago, yeah, there's people doing indie indie books on on like Kickstarter and Indiegogo, but you know the quality wasn't really. It was it was people just trying to get something printed, but man. Ever since Comicsgate, like 
there's just so much cool stuff. It literally, I mean, I, I know people hate the comparison, but it really is like reliving the 90s again because in the 90s, no idea was too crazy. No idea mm-hmm. was, was you know, oh, you can't do that or you can't put that in a book or, or whatever. Everybody was just kind of like, this is my vision. This is what I'm doing. And, you know, you almost have to have that attitude of, I don't care if, if it's going to work or not. I, I just need to get it out. And that's usually the kind of stuff that succeeds. Mm. And uh, just kind of having that confidence in yourself and instead of trying to play placate to an audience that may or may not be there. Um, right. But yeah, it's just, there's just so much good stuff. Like I've got, I'm dying. I've Let's see, what did I, I got Blood Honey. I got Graveyard Shift. Um, I did Red Rooster. Uh, I even had, it's, it's kind of sad because, um, it shows how much time has passed. Uh, before, before my youngest was a year that Halloween, my wife had made him a Red Rooster costume. Oh, wow. And so, and then we have a little, a little, uh, Basset Hound Chihuahua dog and we put a cape on him. So he was the dog. And we took pictures. We sent it to to them, and and now my son is like two and a half. <laughs> so mm. it's like, wow, the, the the books, you know, I'll, I'll wait for it. But man, that one is really kind of been a long uh, time. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's hard to keep your enthusiasm for something that you know. I'm sure. glad they're doing the Walmart deal. I think that's going to really really help. Um, <clears throat> but uh, man. You can't make people wait too long. Like, I got Shinobi Sasquatch. Uh, I went on their campaign, and that book I can I can wait for because I see what Rob Willis does with each page, and I'm just like, holy cow! I just right. I see I see him draw something. And I just want to throw my pencil down. I'm just like, I quit, <laughs> I quit, I quit. But he's a you know, and then that part goes. You know, he's a different kind of artist. You know, he's a uh, he's you know probably the closest comics gate had to a Dale Keown back in his prime. Right. Uh, Cause yep. he's just insane. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of what else I got. Uh, I got the monster hunt deal. I can't wait for that. Cause I love Lone Star one. Um, just so clean and colored well. And I think that's all I'm trying to think. I think that's all the books I've gotten. I I don't get a get a splurge a whole lot. I don't even really buy comics from from the comic book store anymore. So you would think I would have more more of that disposable income, but <laughs> for, as you know, four kids makes it go pretty fast. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. Oh, I meant to ask you uh, yesterday when I was telling my Wildstorm story, doing the talent search. You mentioned you. I think you said you were almost published by Image. Yeah. Um, what was that story? Mark uh, Mark Poulton had we Mark and John and I and and Anthony George we had all met on the Rob Liefeld boards uh, back in the day back in like 2006 and uh, around 2010 2011 Rob uh, rebooted Evangeline mm. and uh, Mark was the writer and they got. Uh, one of the guys on our boards, Owen Genie, to draw it. And then every issue had like a backup story. Like I think John did two different backup stories and then like a double page spread of like the war host. Um, but they asked me to do one for Lord Belial, which was a one page, um, uh, one page kind of like summary of, of the original series and, and Belial. And uh, I drew it. Uh, I was really influenced by Dave Finch back then, so it's very Dave Finchy. Mm. Um, they colored straight from my pencils, and I want to say it was issue nine, Ish, issue eight or nine was the issue was supposed to come out, and then that was the issue that got canceled on. So mm. Mark put the they had like two or three issues worth of stuff done, and Rob just didn't tell anybody that the book was canceled, so people kept working, uh-huh. and then they were they and they would 
every issue would have a cover by Rob. So they were like the next issue, they were waiting for a cover and Rob was like, oh, the book got canceled. And it's like, you want to maybe tell people that? <laughs> right. But uh, so of course that was the, the issue, but Mark put it on a, um, uh, it wasn't a message board, some sort of a site, and he put up the remaining uh, issues that were done and colored and lettered and completed that had just been sitting and waiting. And so mm -hmm. that's the only place that that story's uh, been I'm seen. On. But that's like my, I was this close to being an image artist. <laughs> right. Man. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's I'll, I'll take close over not at all. So, right, yeah, for sure. I take comfort in knowing I was like one of like in the top five for the the Wildstorm yeah. talent search. You know, yeah, and that's that's nuts that they would just like not give you a, a a number to call back or just it, you know, just expect you to like still be there. You know, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, had I known, I would have you know. Because yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think at that point I'd been to any conventions, maybe San Diego Comic-Con, you know, at once. But, like, you know, so I had no idea. And, yeah. But um, I wish I had some kind of heads up. Yeah. Uh, I, I think there's a few people out there that have uh, some bad bad Mr. Lee stories. <laughs> yeah. I know. Um, I, met him. I, I was not impressed. With, with Jim Lee? Yeah. Really? Yeah, he, uh, me and my buddies, we, uh, the people that put that very first book together, we went up to, I want to say it was the first year Image was there before Wizard took over. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm up there with my portfolio and we're in line. I, I had won through my comic book store a, a gold Wildcats number one. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're, I'm in line and, and he's just sitting at his table. Just talking. I don't know if he's getting interviewed or what, but like he was not making. He, people would throw put their books down, and he just signed them, and like wouldn't even look at them, wouldn't even say, like, "Hey, thanks," or or any of that stuff. Mm. And so I get up to him, and I was like, "Hey, you know, or is anybody from?" Because I didn't know how this worked. This was the first time me showing my stuff to anybody, and I was like, "You know, are there any editors here for Image?" He goes, "I don't know. Why don't you go look for him?" And I was <laughs> like, "But I don't even. I don't even know who they are." And he's like, well, I don't care. And then he signed my book and flipped it and called the next person. I'm like, wow. Okay. <laughs> it's like, all right. That's wow. Kind of. Kind of I, I don't know. So that just kind of really soured me to him. And, mm. and uh, uh, one of my friends that was that was with us, this guy, uh, Arthur Chavez, who was inking some of my stuff, uh, Jim was walking across the, the con floor, and he just went up to go not my books or, or anything just wanted to like talk to him he's like kid i don't have time for you wow. <laughs> like you know that, that old adage of don't meet your heroes <laughs> yeah right man just like and it was weird because like you know i was oh gosh was i 18 19 you know kind of crushed me a little bit so i didn't really really draw for a little bit you know after that i was kind of like yeah you know, you did, I wasn't at that stage where I knew kind of how to deal with, you know, not so much rejection, but like you build somebody up in your heads for, you know, for so long and then you meet them and, and you're just kind of like, oh, <laughs> sure. yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. Hey, I got a question real quick in the chat from Steve Swanson. He said, why has extra details in monthly comics gone away in the mainstream? A lot of extra detail stuff doesn't take all that much extra time. And then he said, uh, John Byrne would put in a ton of nonsense detail that would look great and expand the world, but it was simple, quick stuff that didn't slow him down. Because they only hire Tumblr artists now. Yeah, right? Yeah. They're, they're still so terrified of superstar artists and the possibility that the artist can once again be bigger than the book that they're working on, that they like, like the last 10 years of, of Marvel, everybody's like a clone of Stuart Amonin. Now I love Stuart Amonin, Amonin mm -hmm. 
he's able to like change like like there's a superman story he did with Kurt Busaic that was a little more photo real but then you go to like something like empress that he did with um mark, mark Miller. and yeah. then like his x-men stuff it, it kind of changes a little bit and uh, being the first you always helps too but, yeah like you get these guys come in and and trying to ape his style and then you get these tumblr artists and i haven't bought a marvel comic and not even not even so much for the interior art but for the coloring for like the last 10 15 years everything has like a magenta wash over it mm. like it, it's like whoever they're getting to do flats they're doing it in a red in reds and like so everything like all the borders are blacked in so everything's dark already and then you put a magenta wash over everything and it just it's so unappealing like i that's why you know like when um the new 52 came out i got really amped for that because they looked like comics again right a, a bunch of guys like um like uh philip tan tyler kirkham uh dan jurgens being inked by george perez on Green Arrow, and the colors were were bright and vibrant and poppy, like they're supposed to be, because they're superheroes. It's not the inside of a therapist's head where it's all dark and gloomy and whatever. Right. You know, there's a, there's a place for that, but like, like even Spawn was not washed over in a certain tone. It was dark, done well. And uh, same thing with like the darkness or Witchblade. Everything had a tone and a mood that fit the book, but you can't mm -hmm. give me a Spider-Man book that's got this dark gutters on it and a dark magenta wash over over everything because it's just unreadable and unappealing. And mm -hmm. uh, I really think that whoever's in charge has no idea what they're doing, not a clue. Yeah, and, uh, it's just it's heartbreaking because I was a huge Marvel person growing up. That you know, the only DC book I ever got was um, I would get New Teen Titans and I would get Firestorm. And then mm -hmm. from Firestorm, because I think there's a backup story, I got Blue Devil. I thought Blue Devil was just the coolest thing in the world. Um, but those are the only books I got. I didn't get any Batman. I didn't get any unless they were like a gift at a at Christmas or something or a birthday. But I never went out of my way to get like the the big three books or Justice League or any of that stuff. I always kind of gravitate towards the weirdo stuff. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it just breaks my heart because Marvel was the home of so many memories of my childhood of. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I learned how to, to to read and enunciate through comics. Um, it it's just I don't know. There's so much a part of me that you know, Marvel is so much a part of me and my uh, my journey to you know growing up that it just mm -hmm. it's just heartbreaking to see where they're at now. It's heartbreaking to see how they don't give a crap about fans. They don't give a crap about, you know, when they tell people, you know, we're not customer service, the, the heck you're not. <laughs> right. You know, you represent your company. You know, you are a writer or an artist for, for company XYZ. You better believe that you are customer service for that, that product that they are trying to get into people's hands. And, you know, shame on you for, for thinking otherwise, thinking that, you know, it, I could get on an old man rant about uh, how everyone, you know, some younger folks believe that, you know, they're entitled to, to whatever they want, you know, like these Heather Antoses and yeah. uh, Renfamous and all these people that are just full of so much nonsense, you know, and they just feel like they're entitled to it. They're entitled to destroy somebody's career. They're entitled to to call somebody a Nazi and, and, and have it stick, you know, and mm -hmm. it's just like social in a way, social media is kind of expediated the, the, uh, the death knell of, uh, mainstream comics. Mm. That's true. Which, which is fine. Know. Cause you know, we're doing our own thing and, and we're doing fine. Yeah, you know, we're going to be here long after they're gone or farmed out to Dynamite or IDW. Right, exactly. 
Yep. I ramble, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. And I mean, with everything going on right now with, you know, Diamond and, and just, you know, I mean, gosh, it's we're in a great spot doing the crowdfunding stuff. And, you know, our books aren't taking a hit as much as, I mean, they are in some regards, but like yours with the printing and stuff in China. But, um, you know, I mean, people are still going to be getting crowdfunding books, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And look, that's what, that's what Todd McFarlane's doing right now. He's doing crowdfunding. Yeah, and killing it. Holy cow. Mm hmm. A million dollars. Yeah. That's, that's just nuts. Yeah. And it just, you know, for, for so many people who probably thought he was, you know, passe or, or, or just his time had come and passed, man, the, the fever for McFarlane is as high as it ever was. And, mm -hmm. and this proves it. Yeah. I just hope I had heard a rumor that he was talking about doing like a spawn Spider-Man crossover. That would be, that would, that would probably bring in numbers that we haven't seen since the nineties. I mean, mm -hmm. I bet see him draw Spidey again. Oof. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hey man. Here's dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, that's probably all it is, is dreaming. Right, yeah. Well, hey, you never know. I mean, if he gets, you know, if he gets his movie going and just, you know, hits things big, you know, Mar Marvel might be begging him to do something for their with their property, you know? Who knows? I think, I think whoever's at Marvel right now in charge probably don't even remember who Todd McFarlane is. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Like, what does this old guy think he's doing? Ew, let's cancel him. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, um, we're 10 minutes away from an hour. Um, do you want to uh, tell everybody where they can find you online and, and what to look out for from you? Uh, okay. On Twitter, I am Mike McMahon 74 or at Mike McMahon 74, which is uh, let's see, right there. I think <laughs> right. Um, I think on YouTube, I think it's just Mike McMahon, I believe. Uh, Facebook, if you look up uh, USA Assassin fan page, uh, that's where all the updates are for for the pages and sneak peeks and whatnot. Um, I used to have an Instagram, but I don't really use it anymore. So uh, that's, that's pretty much where you can find me. I'm usually more on Twitter than, than anything else, though. Okay. Uh, After the over, I can um, I'll put the your Twitter uh, link in the description too. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate it. So, yeah, man. No problem. But the the description or excuse me the the link for USA Assassin is in the description for the sign up page. So guys, check it out. Um, yeah. There are, is our work on there. And yeah, there's work on there. Yeah. Cool. Good deal, man. And on Mark Polton. Uh, Mark Polton's YouTube page, I believe it's his primetime Polton. There's actually uh, there's a trailer um, that has colors and stuff on it. And then I believe Sweet. there's another video he put up that has, uh, I want to say, like the process of getting a page colored, I think, if I remember correctly. But I'm old and senility <laughs> is coming for me so <laughs> right, right. oh my gosh man that thing is so dope yeah it came out come out good that is just insane so good <laughs> yeah that so sold, right what's that that sold right it did yeah good 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 yep that's awesome so i gotta i'll be hitting the the mailbox today and um yeah so I, I, I scanned it in, and um, do you know Teal Gonzalez? No, I do not. Okay. Um, he's a colorist. He does a lot of my stuff, but um, he's on. He posts stuff on, like, Instagram and stuff, but if, if you're not on Instagram, you might, might not see it. Um, but, yeah, he's going to color it for me, so once it gets colored, I'll, I'll post up the colors. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I'm excited to see it. Put some color. Yeah, that is just, man, all that work, all those – Grenades and pouches and uh -huh. and the ribbons and just 
that's dedication, kids, right there. <laughs> he could have just drawn a very plain spawn, a very plain Angela, and just look at all the ribbons wrapping around her arm. That's somebody who loves his craft. <laughs> mm -hmm. Set no substitutes. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Awesome, Mike. Well, it was awesome chatting with you, bro. We'll we'll definitely do this again. Yeah, yeah, it was great. I feel like I talked the whole time, but <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. I don't know if you got any work done, but but um, next time we'll have to. Yeah. We'll get Sorry, working on a little yeah. bit of a. <laughs> cool. All right, man. Cool. Well, have a good day, brother. All right, you too, buddy. All right, cool. Take care, guys. Um, next week I should be on on like Monday or something. So. I will see you then. Subscribe, like the channel, hit the bell for notifications, and hopefully know where to find me. All my stuff's in the description. So, cool, guys. Take care. Be blessed. Peace. <laughs>